Hi all. Uh, now that we have all of our properties hopefully memorized by now, we are going to continue on on how to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So this is the next section of Lessons with Mrs. H. So properties of a parallelogram, um, it says each quadrilateral in the figure is a parallelogram. What is the relationship between AB and EF? So let's go ahead and highlight that so we know which segments we're talking about. And basically, it's all the properties of a parallelogram. So what do we know about a parallelogram? Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Okay. Kenneth, what do we know about both pairs of opposite sides? Hopefully you said congruent. Okay. And then let's go with Patricia. What do we know about both pairs of opposite angles? Price is right, that is correct, you get congruent. And all pairs of consecutive angles are, let's go with, now yeah, supplementary. And then diagonals, let's call on Mrs. H for this one. Diagonals bisect each other. Okay. So basically, that is just the properties of a parallelogram, which we know by now. So it says ZYAB is a parallelogram. Given that YAB is 70, YZB is 2M. Again, mark your diagrams, kids. Angle ZBA is y. Let's draw that like this. And then and then we have that zm, which is right here, is 2x plus 4. And we have uh, za. Let's go ahead and mark that in a different color. So ZA is 12. All right, so let's go ahead and start finding some information. So first of all, um, I'm just gonna find M first because the, the black pen sticks out to me. So what do we know about parallelograms? That opposite angles are congruent. So 2M equals 70. M equals 35. Okay. And then, from there, I want to find y. Well, to find y, remember that consecutive angles are supplementary. So this angle and this angle add up to 180. So 180 minus 70 gives me 110. So 110 degrees for y. And then the last part, the green and the yellow, go bikes. Uh, we know that diagonals bisect each other. So, if diagonals bisect each other and the full length is 6, then that means half, I just said that, I just gave you the answer, that the full length is 12, then half of it is 6. So we can go ahead and set the green. 2x plus 4 equals 6. So 2x equals 2 x equals 1. So that was kind of just a review of what we've been doing so far. Uh, now we're going to actually do a proof. Woohoo! Okay, so once again, the given is given to you to break down information. Okay, we want to just give you stuff to give you stuff. So the fact that it says ABCD is a parallelogram, what are some things that we know? Okay, now, remember, you can't just, like, skip it, right? Like, you still have to um, mark the diagrams and prove it. So, let's go ahead and write down the given. Oh, I wanted to do that. So, ABCD is a parallelogram. Angle GAH is congruent to angle EFC, and we can mark that because it's already telling us that it's congruent. So GHA 
is congruent to FEC. And then HB is congruent to DE. So HB is congruent to DE. Okay. So let's break down ABCD as a parallelogram. So if ABCD is a parallelogram, then we know DC is congruent to AB. And why did I decide to work with that? Because we know that these two segments are congruent. So let's focus on the big picture. So DC is congruent to BA. And what you would say is if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, and you can shorthand parallelogram with two parallel lines and then the gram, then opposite sides are congruent. Okay, and you, this is how you would write anything that you were trying to prove with a parallelogram. So if you were showing that angles were, opposite angles were congruent, then you would start off by saying, if a quadrilateral is a p-gram, then opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so that's how you always start this phrase. So if you want to put a little star next to this, uh, that helps you with the phrase. All right, we're trying to prove that GH is congruent to EF. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that just to recognize what we are trying to prove. So notice that there are these little tiny triangles. Okay, hopefully when you hear the word triangles, you think that we need to prove triangles congruent. So if I know this full length is congruent, and I know these little pieces are congruent, then what can I say about AH and CE? Well, I can also say they are congruent. So CE is congruent to AH, and the reason would be is the subtraction property. Remember that if you subtract congruent segments from congruent segments, you get congruent segments. So I'm going to mark these congruent now since I've officially proved that. So when you have congruent segments and you subtract congruent segments, the result is also congruent segments. Okay. Now we also have a pair of congruent angles that was given to us. So we need to prove one other thing. Well, there's no other information about sides, okay? Besides the fact, of course, that, you know, opposite sides congruent, opposite sides parallel. So that should lead you to think that you need to prove another angle congruent. So with a parallelogram, we know that opposite sides are parallel. So let's mark that now. DC is parallel to BA. And we would start off by saying if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite sides parallel. So why am I doing that? Well, if these sides are parallel, then this is a transversal. Okay, and if you want to, you know, extend this so you can see it better. Okay, and what do we know about certain angles when lines are parallel? Well, in this example, we know that angle DCA is congruent to BAC. And the reason being is because if lines parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay. So what does that help us with? Well, if you mark your A's and your S's, A, S, A. So triangle 
GAH is congruent to triangle FCE, remember that order matters when you're writing a congruent statement, by ASA. How did we prove that? Well, the given right here, we have the sides congruent here, and then we have the other pair of angles congruent there. And then lastly, we can go ahead and say GH is congruent to EF by CPCTC. Remember that you cannot use CPCTC before you prove the triangle's congruent. And you cannot use ASA or SAS or anything like that to prove parts congruent. Okay. All right. We will save. There's another proof in these notes, but we will save that and do that one together in class. So let's move on to the next part that it says um, six ways to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. One is by saying both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Okay. Another is both side, pair of opposite sides are parallel. Both pairs of opposite angles congruent, which would be the inside. One angle is supplementary to both of its adjacent or consecutive angles, means the same thing. Both diagonals bisect each other. And finally, one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel. So this one's really important to draw down, and it has to be the same pair. So if I did this, we could not prove that that is a parallelogram it has to be the same pair. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next page. All right, so this top half asks us if there's enough information to conclude that each quadrilateral below is a parallelogram. If not, explain why not. If so, state the reason. Well, if we look at this first one, I remember the reasons from the previous page, we have one pair of parallel and congruent sides. So that would be yes, and it's because one pair of parallel and congruent sides. Remember that it has to be the same set of sides. So if you want to take a good active note about that, it has to be the same sides. Okay. All right, do we have enough information? Let's go with Pedro, what do you think? Well, if you said the answer is yes, you are correct. And it's because diagonals bisect each other. Okay. All right, let's go to the next example. Let's go with Cushy. Hopefully, bingo, you said yes, because opposite sides congruent. And then finally, we have an oddball out. This answer is actually no, because it could be an isosceles trapezoid. That would be a triangle. And the reason why it can be an isosceles trapezoid, and I kind of talked about this in class already, is that if I were to redraw this and just bump out that 12, these are still the same sides, and you have one pair of parallel sides. That's the definition of isosceles trapezoid. Okay. All right. Let's go, I'm going to save this proof for class, so let's go to the last page. Okay, so this problem is kind of really in, um, lengthy to do on a video. So I'm kind of just going to go ahead and give you guys the groundwork and then you can go through it on your own and ask me questions if you have them. So it says graph the parallelogram, JKLM. So let's go ahead and graph that. 
That would be the highlighter, not the pen. There we go. Uh, negative four, negative one. So J, K, L, M. All right, and the problem says show that the quad J, L, K, M is a parallelogram by showing that opposite sides are congruent. So in order to do this problem, and this is what I said, I'm gonna lay the groundwork for you guys and then you can um, do the rest of it later. To prove that a parallelogram, or a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent, you need to find the length of all the sides. So you would need to do the distance formula four times. Because you would need to find the length of all four sides. So let's do one together. Let's do the distance of JK. So distance equals negative one minus a negative four squared plus negative six minus a negative one squared. So that gives me three squared plus negative five squared, which equals the square root of nine plus 25, which is root 34. So JK is root 34. So if opposite sides are parallel, then that means LM should also be root 34. So you would do the distance of LM and see if you get root 34. Then you would have to find the distance of KL, and whatever you get for that should be the same as the distance of JM. So these should be congruent. Sorry about that. and these should be congruent, okay? And we are already told that this is parallelogram, so it should work. Then it says show that the quad JKLM is a parallelogram by showing that one pair of sides is both congruent. Again, focusing on one pair of sides, it needs to be the same pair and parallel. Well, right above, you will have just proved that you have a pair of opposite sides congruent. So take that same pair and see if it has the same slope. Why the same slope? Because of the fact that parallel lines have the same slope. So you would find the slope of JK and the slope of LM. You very well could have found the slope of these two as well. It doesn't matter which two you pick, just make sure you pick an opposite pair not um, a consecutive pair, okay? And again, you should get that they are parallel, okay? And then finally, it says, what is another way we could show that JKLM is a parallelogram? Well, building off this slope concept, it would be both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So what you would do then is you would find the slopes of the other set pairs and see if they are the same. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and finish this up on your own to prove it. Uh, if you have questions, just let me know the next time I see you in class, and I hope you all have a spectacular day. Thank you.